That guy eats balls. What's up, stars? Welcome back to the galaxy. My name is Keegan, and today we're going to be talking about the Liver King, aka Brian Johnson. Now, I kind of wanted to tackle this from a few different angles because this this whole thing with the Liver King, it's a very interesting subject matter. He's a very interesting subject to tackle. Uh, to say that he is uh, controversial, divisive, I don't think would be a stretch of the imagination by any standards. So there is a lot to cover when you see somebody who is this kind of controversial, this kind of decisive. And that's really looking at both sides of the equation, both people on either side of the argument and trying to understand where they're coming from now when trying to kind of understand this guy it's important to kind of generally get a grip as to what it is we're dealing with now if you don't know about brian johnson or the liver king as we will refer to him from here on out the liver king is a personality on various social media platforms youtube tiktok uh, instagram uh, part of what makes him so relevant is the fact that he's got a lot of followers a million plus on pretty much all those platforms if i'm not mistaken except for maybe instagram but i'll double check that editor keegan feel free to throw that in there for us um and so he's got a lot of exposure and with that exposure comes well a certain responsibility to the people who he's communicating with when it comes to the veracity of his statements you know how honest he is how grounded he is about various topics and of course a responsibility to make sure that what he's saying is the kind of thing that doesn't spark off you know unneeded amounts of aggression violence anger uh, towards any one particular group of people now some of the things that he's popular for are uh, his extremely hardcore workouts his long fasts we're talking like a week he's talked about doing ones for longer than that i don't think he's actually done one for a month but well, i guess we might get there today we'll talk about that uh, and of course eating raw meat he very much believes in eating raw meat and bone marrow as being you know he espouses all the health benefits that come with eating raw marrow and raw liver the point being uh he has a lot of uh e extreme uh, methodologies when it comes to nutrition especially his love for eating of testicles raw as well if i'm not mistaken um and that's something that's going to get a lot of people's attention. When somebody eats balls on the internet, not for fear factor purposes or something of that sort, you're going to have a lot of people talking, especially if you do it regularly. And uh, especially if you say it's for health and nutrition and, you know, make all these sort of health claims about it. He also believes in a bunch of other things, but we'll, we'll get to that eventually. We'll talk about all that stuff. So let's start by breaking down what I believe to be the major reasons or the subsections where people find problems with the Liver King. Number one are his tenants. He has these nine ancestral tenants. Now, he's very much a fan of ancestral concepts, ancestral living, ancestral thoughts, ways, and methodologies. Uh, and so he has these nine ancestral tenants that he uses as the sort of basis for everyone to get their life together and start moving on the right track with their fitness and their health and their life in general, really. Uh, when I looked into it, it wasn't just about fitness. But again, we will get there. Um, that's the first piece that seems to have uh, enough that people graft onto and, well, let's be real, talk shit about. The second thing are his sort of vague slash conflicting claims and answers and information. Now, this has everything to do with the fact that if you look at a picture of the Liver King, he does not look like an individual who achieved his physique naturally. That's what some a lot of people would assume. Um, now, what do I think? Well, let's we'll look at the information that we have available about Brian, and then we'll kind of make our decision from there. We'll get there at the end, and I'll tell you how I feel about it. Um, but I encourage you, don't speed run this video and head to the end, because there's a lot of very surprising information and ideas that I found through doing this video. So sit tight. I think you might actually be pretty surprised yourself. Now, that's the second place, because when it comes down to it, for a long period of time, he was very vague about his answers for if he was natural, if he was not. Well, are you natty? Are you not? Do you take steroids? Have you taken steroids? He's very vague about that. And I don't know if he never has, but again, we'll, we'll get to that part. The third part is 
related to the vague answers concept, which is his body composition. Now, when you, again, look at his body composition, a lot of people look at that body composition. They see him in that state, it seems, year-round. I don't think I've seen a picture of the Liver King not in condition like this. So people see that and they go, well, if you're going to be like that all year round, big and shredded, you know, you can't be jacked and shredded simultaneously all the time. So you, you must obviously be taking some sort of juice. That seems to be the conclusion a lot of people come to. Now, I'll come to some kind of conclusion by the end of this video. That much I can promise you. But I think it's important for us to kind of look at these pieces individually and kind of talk about them. Each one, you know, kind of picking them apart. And I really kind of want to see just in general, is this guy legit? Is the Liver King, is his methodology, is, is what he does, is he legit as a whole, as a fitness influencer personality, is he legit? That's the question I'm trying to answer here. So let's get down to it. And I think the first place we really got to start is going to be those tenants. Number one, sleep. Now, that one, I, I honestly don't think there's any reason to question it. When it comes down to it, I actually very much believe in the importance of sleep and how it affects your physiological state, your performance, your growth athletically. I've seen various pieces of research that talk about the benefits of sleep and how it relates to your muscle growth and how it relates to, of course, your you know psychological health, how it relates to recovery and repair uh, and various other factors that are important when it comes to, you know, the progression, growth, and maintenance of a healthy athlete. So I really do agree with what he says here. And he also talks a bit in this session about, you know, things like sleep hygiene. It's very basic stuff, fundamental things that I think it's easy to get behind. Have a routine and a schedule. Um, try to make sure that you're turning off various things like your phones and your TVs and your computers for a certain period before you go to bed because these things cause your eyes to interact with the blue light. The blue light then sends signals to your brain telling you that it is the middle of the day because our brains do use light cues in order to try to understand what time of day it is. And so what state we should be in, what part of our circadian rhythm we're really supposed to be in at that particular point in time. So that stuff seems fundamental. I, I couldn't find anything there that made me go, oh, well, that's total nonsense, right? So sleep, that's legit. So we're off to a good start here. The second one, eat. Now that one, again, is anyone really going to argue that? You're... You're not really going to argue that, are you? I mean, it's just another legitimate, fundamental part of the nutrition and health journey. It, if you're not eating in order to support your goals, you don't reach your goals. That's just that's just what it is. There's no way around it. So making sure that you're eating things that are good for you as much as humanly possible. When I say that, I mean things that are going to be nutritious, something things that are going to help fuel you um, as much as humanly possible. Uh, that's what's really important. I mean, he really seems to talk about, you know, uh, it, you know, being moderate. He does seem to have some measure of nuance when it comes to his conversations about these things. He says, you know, be moderate about these things that, you know, you enjoy and try to reduce them to some degree, but more importantly, increase the amount of whole foods you're eating, increase the amount of foods that are going to help give you the vitamins and minerals and macronutrients and micronutrients that your body really needs in order to optimally perform. That, again, legit, I can't argue that point. There's no way around it. So number two, eat, also legit. And I'm already surprised by this point. It's, this is the point where I started to go, is this guy more legit than I thought? I, I was really starting to swing to the S at this point. Number three, move. I mean, thus far, it almost seems like I don't have to explain some of these. Like, move. Move lift things get exercise be active these are just basics of health that everyone should be engaged in they're not arguable concepts they're just steadfast facts they're things that you just should be doing with your day in your life so again i mean legit number three move legit i, I can't there's no way around it number four shield this is where we start to find some stuff that's 
questionable. And this is where you start to find concepts that I can see where some people on the side who are his detractors, his critics, would say, well, obviously you're just shoveling horseshit at these people and saying fancy things and appealing to certain various cult-like concepts and trying to tap into those demographics to make them part of your 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 demographic and make money off of them i i can see where they're coming from with this because we're talking when he says shield we're talking about shielding from you know emfs so uh electromagnetic fields and wi-fi uh saying that these are damaging and problematic carcinogenic you know they're costly on your health so on so forth now here's the thing i went looking in order to see if i can find any information that really corroborated these ideas that it would in some way validate the concepts because again if i'm gonna critique this i kind of want to know is there research to back anything any of the things he's saying and what i found was one systematic review that found no link between sickness and wi-fi which kind of confirmed what i thought in the first place but i was like okay let's keep searching um Maybe we can find something on EMF specifically. Maybe EMF is where the real problem is here. Perhaps. I'm not totally sure. Um, now, the review that I found um, was actually on children's health, and it found no conclusive links between negative health and the EMFs. But they did say to be cautious because, as you could probably guess from children's exposure to EMFs, there's not really a lot of human data and doing human trials is just not possible. So with there being so little data on EMFs effect on children, they said, well, it's inconclusive. We don't have any evidence at this particular point in time to say yay or nay. But at the same time, caution is still advised because children we want to protect them. That's a very logical thing and so i don't blame somebody trying to act cautiously in this particular regard it makes perfect sense to me uh, now of course i'm going to link these two studies below in the comments um, i'm not going to link all the studies i looked through to verify validate cross check all the stuff that the liver king says because i feel like some of y'all just don't care if you do care let me know i'll see if i can track down some of the other ones just mention them in the comment section below and i'll see if i can backtrack on it uh but again not going to go looking for them initially so you know let's just move on and the ones i do give you if i don't again you know where to go number five connect now yet again i uh, we're back to sort of nonsensical tinfoil hatty you know cultist concepts that don't really have any rooting in science as far as i could tell now i went looking for information that would truly corroborate anything he said and i did find something kind of interesting what i found was a research article uh that was done by let's see if i can find the name here james oshman and there's some other uh, people contributing to this paper, but this did talk about the value and benefit of grounding, which is what connecting is about. It's about, you know, grounding. So this is the idea of walking around barefoot on soil and the grass and like letting yourself connect with the earth and the earth's electromagnetic field and letting it help heal you, yada, yada, yada. I went looking for information to validate any of this and I found one article that did say, yeah, there's a lot of great benefits. It's fantastic. Uh, and so I immediately thought, wow, okay, conflicting evidence might be worth looking into this in more detail. The first place I looked, of course, was to see if there were any conflicts of interest when it come, came to the funding uh, for the actual research itself. So I scrolled down, and lo and behold, this particular article was written by, and the research was done by, individuals who have purchased shares, they own shares in a company that manufactures indoor grounding solutions. So that's a gigantic conflict of interest, which means this paper is essentially useless to us because you can't trust somebody who's writing a paper on a particular subject if that subject is also a subject he happens to have a vested interest in it being positive. He has a financial interest in that. You can't trust the stuff he says about it anymore. He's not impartial. That's a very biased view, a very biased form of scientific evaluation. So, which I really personally, I don't think you can really even call scientific evaluation at that point. It's just, you're just boosting your shit. So it's like, 
Come on, stop gassing yourself up. So that useless. Uh, and then I went looking, seeing if I could find something else because I was thinking, okay, well, maybe this is just a blip. Maybe there is value in it and he just so happens to have this vested interest and, you know, that's it's a whole other different thing. And I found another article that was talking about the benefits of grounding. And I was like, oh, damn, like maybe, maybe I was wrong. I, it's very possible I was wrong. I'm always willing to accept when I am wrong about something. Went looking and found that a lot of the research used in the sort of meta-analysis for this particular paper came from the same guy who has the shares in the grounding, indoor grounding solution. So, also useless. So yeah, that uh, that didn't that didn't go as planned. But uh, <laughs> needless to say, I I couldn't find anything that really truly validated anything he was saying here in terms of the connecting thing. Grounding doesn't seem to have any scientific basis. Let's move on. Moving on to the sixth tenant, which is cold. I also think this one is nonsense. Um, and I don't just think this one. The research that I found also seems to conflict with it i mean not only do we have the fact that he says that you know cold makes you strong and uh makes you uh more robust and makes you healthy i mean if that was true if that was the 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 operating factor behind what made a person healthy and strong then everyone in the caribbean would be weak and sick and fat possibly dead and that i mean quick logical check not the case so the idea that we're as he says purpose built for cold i don't agree with uh and to add on top of that when we think about the one major application where athletically we're talking about the application of cold for the treatment of injuries the guy who coined that whole concept he recanted in like 2013 so that that doesn't even hold true really anymore he recanted and said you know i was wrong turns out not the case oopsie daisy so yeah next one though this is the seventh tenant if i'm not mistaken probably seventh there's a number somewhere just follow the numbers the numbers will be more right than me probably the seventh tenant pretty sure seventh is sun and sun that one does have some scientific value to it especially for people of color so uh, for those of you who don't know people of color absorb vitamin d from the sun at a slower rate than people who are not of color and so we need to get more vitamin d from the sun or have it supplemented especially in the winter time in order to make up for the fact that we're just not getting enough uh, so the idea of going getting outside getting sun you know allowing ourselves to get natural vitamin d that one sounds pretty legit so again i'll give it to him number seven sun that one seems legit and not just because i personally like the sun better than a light cold also because it just the science seems to actually lead to some logical justification for that so yeah legit number eight fight now, this one's interesting, and I guess I would say, like, legit? The idea here is that he thinks you have to push your boundaries and challenge your comfort zone and, you know, struggle against something, strive against something, which is going to help you grow as an individual. Now, I do believe in that concept. I think that the only way to see progress is to push beyond what we think we are capable of, what we believe ourselves to be uh, limited to. And that's how we see movement to greater heights and further lengths than we were ever able to go to before. So I do believe this is legit. It's a weird way to put it because it, it sounds like wildly combative. But yeah, I mean, it's legit. Uh, I would say, yeah, pushing your boundaries and going beyond your comfort zone valuable way to help see progress. And yeah, just as a person, not just an athlete or someone who's lifting. You're going to need to do that in order to see progress. Even the concept of progressive overload when it comes to weightlifting, basically built on that concept. So fight, legit. Now the last one, the ninth tenant is bond. And yeah, I, I can't argue with this one either. This one, he talks about the idea of spending quality time with people you love and you care about and connecting with them and being able to truly form that sort of 
bond, that connection, that ability to really like share moments with them that, you know, you guys can then carry forth into your life and use that as momentum to continue strengthening your relationships. He believes in the power of that and says that's something we should be doing all the time and day on a daily basis. And I, I can't blame him for that either. That's another valuable thing. I mean, psychologically speaking, it has a lot of benefits when we are able to truly connect with people who are around us that we care about. Um, and it makes us for much better people, it gives us a, a community that we can rely on to help us when we are dealing with, you know, challenges as well as gives us people we can share our successes with. And these things are things he seems to be very fond of. And I can't blame him. I think this one's legit too. So not a lot of nonsense tenants here. A lot of these are actually really legit. So for the most part, the tenants thing isn't something a lot of people should be criticizing him for, at least not wholly. There's some elements here that, yeah, deserves, you know, a hard look and maybe some more, uh, some more scientific evidence to really verify their, their value or their efficacy. But on the whole, I think somebody adopting these tenants would not leave them in a bad position. It would actually probably help a lot of people improve their health, fitness, and just general life. Yeah, the Liver King is a, he's an interesting guy. Uh, but when it came down to it, looking through all of the information that I found on him, especially when it sort of pertains to these tenants, it really surprised me just how agreeable it all was i wasn't expecting it like you can kind of see it in my expression in the videos uh i i had no idea i was going to be coming up against that everything i've seen about this guy screams sort of i need to be on the opposing side or otherwise i would be an idiot or a, a complete charlatan or you know risk completely devaluing myself uh, professionally but quite frankly when you take a closer look at like the tenants like it's just it, it kind of proves a point that i pretty much always have which is the basics are really what make this industry function. I mean, more often than not, if you find something that seems to be working and helping people, it's really just the same things regurgitated, just repackaged in a new way. It's nothing new. It's nothing groundbreaking. It's just they found some way to say it that appeals to a new audience or a different audience. And that's really what you find here. I mean, there are definitely some things that just don't seem to be really backed on a lot of science or a lot of evidence. But for the most part, the stuff that is going to have a major impact on your health and fitness, uh, at least in a very concrete sense, are things that just make sense. They're easy. They're they're normal. They're they're well understood. They've been around forever. So I guess in that sense, it does work as ancient knowledge. So got to give him uh, give him his props on that one. Um, well, this does it for part one. Um, make sure you stay tuned. Part two coming next week. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do any of these little like talky things at the end of the next one, but I figured I wanted to wrap this up a little cleaner. So, of course, like, subscribe. Uh, hopefully you guys found this interesting and entertaining. Hopefully you guys got something out of this. Um, I mean, I encourage you to take a look at the Liver King stuff just for your own edification and to see how you feel about it. Uh, and then, of course, if you have already or, you know, once you do, go ahead, hit the comment section below. Let me know what you think about them. Uh, and try to be as objective as possible. Be honest with yourself. See if there's anything you can actually agree with that you see on his uh, in his content and in his offering. Anyhow, hope you guys have a good one. And of course, stay shining because the galaxy can only be a bright and beautiful place if we all shine together. Peace.